step into the latest installment of our rebroadcast series, podcast number 69, titled Rare Severe Geomagnetic Storm Warning, featuring Mike from COT on the N Generation Project. Originally aired on May 10, 2024, exclusively on Council of Time Com, see link in description. This episode delves into Bible study, highlighting eschatology amidst today's challenges. Join Michael from Council of Time as we explore these peaceculiar circumstances in this riveting episode. To understand more, visit the Council of Time on their only official website, linked in description. We're dedicated to providing truth, hope, and support to those struggling with addiction who simultaneously is seeking God's guidance. Your support drives our mission to guide individuals toward truth, sobriety, and preparedness for what is described in scripture as perilous times. Join our exclusive locals community for EGP family members and have early access to many cool things. Thank you for being a vital part of the success of the End Generation Project. Before finally delving into today's rebroadcast podcast, Rare Severe Geomagnetic Storm Warning Episode 69, we wanted to take a moment to address our absence and explain why we've been off the radar for a while. Running a YouTube channel comes with its challenges, and unfortunately, the costs associated with maintaining it became quite high for us. Additionally, we recently underwent a significant move, which further disrupted our ability to create content. However, we're excited to announce that we're back and ready to dive into new episodes with you all. We're thrilled to present our latest installment, episode hash 69, Rare Severe Geomagnetic Storm Warning and we can't wait to share it with you. We appreciate your patience and understanding during this hiatus, and we're grateful for your continued support. Stay tuned for more exciting content coming your way, and thank you for being part of our community. All right, now let's dive into today's podcast. Rare severe geomagnetic storm warning. Tune in to the rebroadcast of N Generation Projects Podcast 69 with Mike from COT. Blessings to all. Good evening, everybody out there. Uh oh. Let's see. I don't want to be too loud here. Turn that back just a little bit. Just a hair. Maybe more than a hair. Right, you guys can hear me okay, right? Everything is good to go? You guys hear me good? I hope so. Let me turn this off here. Oops. All right. I think we're, we're in the house here. Well, some people are seeing the auroras already. You guys know that? So some of the effects from that, uh, those five uh, flares... Have already reached Earth. Actually, it's a good time to measure what's happening with uh, some of the energy and how it's feeding into the Earth. See how much it overcharges. It'll be an excellent gauge uh, for any other happenings. Now we do have we do have a buffer, right? Our magnetosphere is a buffer, and. Uh, it is absorbing quite a bit right now. As I said last night, when I was on Pastor Paul's show, I'm watching the D layer of the um, ionosphere, which is about 35 to 55 miles uh, above the surface here. And so I'm watching to see what charge characteristics will be in there. That will be a telltale sign of tectonic shifting. And so I'm going to watch it, correlate the numbers, and then after all this is over. Uh, we'll be able to see, you know, we'll have a better gauge as far as prediction, warnings, uh, advisories, so on and so forth. So we're going to see what happens with that. So between right now, actually right now, and uh, more than likely next six hours, seven hours, uh, people will be able to see Auroras all the way down. They're, they're coming all the way down to Virginia. That's pretty, pretty far. We discussed this a long time ago. You guys remember when uh, auroras we seen all over the skies. We've discussed this before. 
People will see it as some fascinating thing. They will miss the entire warning. Right? Those are high altitude collisions, is what they're saying. They have no idea about that. And uh, it will start a degrading uh, factor around our planet that will, um, you know, really show us how much conditions are degrading. We have, we, I don't see how anybody can deny it. I really don't. Uh, we have accelerated geoactivity, right? We have something is happening to humanity. Humanity is reaching its boiling point. Like they're stuck in a house. It's almost like cabin fevers all over the world. People are bitter at one another. Some people, they have no idea what's going on with their bodies. People are having more strange medical reports than ever before. Hmm? But strange medical reports. Um, anxiety medication is being given out more and more every single day. And uh, the, these are only the beginnings. You know, and I can't help but to prefer back to the Word of God to get the absolute picture on everything that's happening. It is a, it is the excellent anchor. Now, of course, everybody has interpretations. I'll be honest with you. I try to stay away from interpretations of God's word. I do. I do. We are human beings. We can't help it sometimes. Uh, but I try to stay away from that because I don't want to fall into this prediction pattern, right? formulating the word of God to suit my paradigm. I don't want that to happen. We still have a work to do. And I'm driven by so many people out there suffering. They have no answers. Some people still question their relationship with Christ. Some people seem to be powerless in the face of darkness. Things are happening like that. More and more people have requests. So certainly for this organization, we want to step in and do what we can for everybody who is like that. But I'll say it again. Charity starts at home. That means here in COT, that's where the work must be done first. Then this house can reach out, right? And because we're going to go deep into spiritual things in the Bible, spiritual topics, I'm going to give you a warning. When we put Christ first... Satan will raise his head. I want you guys to be ready for that. Remember that statement. He will attack this place like never before when we begin to discuss these principles of Christ. He doesn't like that because that breaks people free. Satan does not care who's reading the word of God. He does not care who has an interpretation. He cares who believes in Christ. That's what he cares about. And so he will fight that tooth and nail to get people back on their, you know, back on this track of bitterness and having a judgmental attitude and, and, and all these different things that, that actually start to degrade the person who exercises them. I hope that you guys, that all of us can get past that. We will be using uh, some of those lost books. We, we are going to be able to do so much because we solved the bandwidth problem, right? We solved that. Uh, hopefully, we can keep that. But we did solve that. So it is effectively solved, which means we can go ahead with uh, web things, you know, the website things. We didn't have that before, and we ran into massive problems uh, attempting to, uh, you know, extend services out there, file servers and all this, that, and the other. But we shouldn't have that issue right now. We can run at a pretty high capacity. Um, now, folks, it does. This depends. All of this depends. You know, it is a month to month thing that we do here. Month to month. There are no guarantees on any month. I'm just thankful for the months that work. All right. Very thankful for that. So we'll do all we can to keep everybody in the loop. Plus, I feel like I've been fired. Right. I couldn't do work on the Internet. Uh, the website, uh, that really gets to me. I have a lot to uh, write about, talk about, believe it or not. And so I want to get started, right? Our midnight hours.
We're going to have uh, more and more of those morning studies. We're going to have quite a bit of those. Uh, we have a, there's a project I'm doing. Finally, we can do it without interruptions. And um, it's going to be to start the Bible from page one all the way through the Bible. I'll be doing that in the morning hours. It'll be a long and tedious study. You know, it'll be a pre-recorded thing. I'll do that uh, early in the mornings and then play it a little later after that. So anybody who wants to get in on that, great. It, it's always charged uh, when that happens. I've not done that here at COT yet, but uh, uh, certainly not recorded it. But we're going to do it. So uh, that'll be a good study. The Word of God is, is liberating. It really is. It's very liberating. My hope is that none of you will be powerless and truly ready in the times that come. And I hope that nobody falters due to these elections. These elections have turned quite violent, um, quite destructive. It's a very sad thing, but, but we knew that would happen. It's almost a model of what happened in times of old. In fact, it is ironic that the USA would take the same path as Israel so long ago. Also, you hear on the Internet, uh, we have, God has provided us great pastors and lots of speakers who have very good, um, very good spirits internally. And they speak about the Word of God, and that's excellent. One thing I'm going to begin to do is talk in that area that, that really caught me off guard, right? Really did. Now, let me, I'll explain one thing to you guys. It's Friday, so I can go ahead and do this. I'll explain one thing. In, in the course of my life, I was thrust into something. I had no idea what it would be, right? what, what the end result would be. And it ended up dealing with a lot of spiritual things and weird things. When that happened, it seemed like a, I ran into a brick wall of darkness. Right, so it, it went from, and I was one of those people, believe it or not, I was one of those people who, if somebody started talking about UFOs, internally, I would just look at that person like something was wrong with that person. That was me. If anybody believed in that stuff, I would look at them like, you know, this person isn't, their bowling ball does not go all the way down the lane. Right? Um, that changed. It changed. And there's no way to communicate everything somebody would go through dealing with that area. But when you stand face to face with anything that is not supposed to exist, it is uh, mentally, physically, and spiritually overwhelming, right? Not to mention there were long-term side effects. Long-term. For example, our team was somehow exposed to high doses of radiation. I lost all my hair, all of it. Not one hair was on my body. My appetite was very different. Um, all of us had similar markings on our bodies, right? Earlobes raised, both sides. Um, some some permanent markings, you know, things like that, and weird things. And... Um, but then it drew me closer to the Most High. Now, I needed the word not to read an experiment, not to hope and wish something were true, right? I needed the real deal. I did not need theory. I didn't want somebody's theory on what they thought would work, right? I didn't need some uh, get-rich-quick scheme, a, a set of words and incantations to make that happen. I did certainly did not need some positive energy guru uh, to speak. I need the real deal. And because you would stand before things that are not, uh, you know, you stand before something that's not supposed to exist, all the playtime is out the window. That's when internally you're shaking. You can be so afraid you can't do anything. I was so afraid I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything, not one thing. But the basis of the entire those, those, all those years, it was a spiritual basis. Spiritual basis was the basis of everything, even the physical uh, ramifications of being in certain areas, right? It is, I'll tell you right now, that subject is grotesque. 
it is not what people think it is, right? If they think it's some uh, beautiful thing, they've already messed up. It is an assault, an attack on your senses. It is extremely seductive. And it can actually cause a person to cast down the word of God without saying it. You really can. And when it comes down to spiritual freedom, if you don't have the real deal, you just simply won't be free. And so what it caused many of us to do was to search out the word of God for real. I mean, for real, right? None of this, uh, none of the mumbo jumbo stuff. None of the repetitive words until something worked. None of that. But to actually step into faith and find out what that was and begin to live by it, right? There is a mechanism within you, a forceful mechanism that comes out when you're upset sometimes you guys know how when you are determined to do something and somebody is trying to stop you and you say no way i'm not going to stop doing this i'm going to go forward no matter what or possibly you have a loved one who is sick uh somebody who's hurt and you have to render aid and at that time nothing can stop you right nothing can in that respect uh when you go forward you're not thinking about yourselves that's the beginning of faith. As it turns out, when you're thinking about yourself, it's a, it blocks faith. When you're thinking about a persistent path, nothing can stop you in the first place. You, you truly are made in the image and likeness of the creator, which means within you is a power, is an authority that anything spiritual, right, can never circumvent all too often, though, people are duped into believing that they're powerless, that they can't do anything, right? They're duped into believing in their circumstances that they see. All of you should know by now that every single circumstance you thought would take you out did not. So, in fact, you believed in a lie, truth be told, because you're here right now. How many of you should not be here right now? You just shouldn't be here. You should not be, uh, you know, active in the word of God. You should be a mindless somebody else. You know, you, you should have been the worst of the worst. Life should have gotten to you, but it didn't. And how many times did you believe that it was over, that this was it? You know, this is my undoing or something like that. Do you see? Because the convincing, when you were in that state of mind, you saw your circumstances. Then you began to project an ending to that circumstance, but it never took place. In fact, it never takes place, does it? It's a big lie. And then we begin to, we get upset over a lie. Now listen to me carefully. That means if you believe your situation is going downhill, it's non-recoverable, right? You start believing in that, in a lie, you, because it didn't happen, you believe in that lie, you also begin to treat others around you based on that lie you believe. That lie is formed by what you have been exposed to. Now, that means all of us at some point have believed in a lie, haven't we? We have believed in it, and at that time, nothing could have convinced us. Short of Christ appearing, nothing could have convinced us that we would, you know, be here free of that issue today. Some of you right now, you may be in a circumstance. I can tell you right now, you, you stay with Christ. <clears throat> you will be free of that circumstance, whatever it is. You will be. In those various parts of life, you really thought it was, you know, your life was uh, incredibly done for. So, we can concede that we believed in a lie. We did. We believed in a falsehood and acted on that falsehood. And did you notice when you acted on the falsehood, it did indeed make other things worse. Because all of what we were doing was bound in a delusion. A delusion is when you live your reality and you think your reality is the truth. So in fact, you have a taste of what it is. To be under a strong delusion, you know, not as strong as one the Father will 
give people over to. But you have a taste of what it is to be given over to that strong delusion, right? And then all of a sudden, you get free of it. Now, follow me on this, because it probably happened more than once, right? That you were free of it. But when you were free of it, did you ever look back into that circumstance, not to deny that you fell for it? Never that. Don't deny that you fell for something, right? Be thankful you were lifted out of something. Be thankful you were delivered. Don't wash it under the carpet. A lot of people will say, well, you know, I'm done with that, you know, thing. I'm not going to think about it. We don't dwell in the past, but most certainly you look for your father in the past and how he delivered you because everything in your life will add to your faith. If you do not try and sweep it under the rug, right? That means think about it, revisit it, see your father's deliverance in it because he's the one that got you out of that mess. Everybody failed you, by the way, during that time. You remember nobody could help you. Nobody could. You thought at the beginning, well, I'll just, you know, get some help from so-and-so. It'll be over. Well, I'll just do this little thing over here. It'll be over. But it wasn't. You sunk deeper and deeper and deeper. Deeper and deeper. Many of you have gone through bouts of depression, but you didn't share it with anybody. Right? But I, I would go so far as to say just about 98% of us have gone through some deep depression. We've gone through a time where we honestly believed we did not matter. We did. We honestly believed that. Some of us, we couldn't wait until the end of all things just so we could escape the turmoil of day-to-day -day life. How many were like that? How many were like that? The, this is called a, this is a truth conversation, right? Unexpected, but a truth one. Uh, but this is where we were. We were delivered out of all of them. Upon looking back in those situations, you can see that the Lord truly delivered you because everybody else failed you. All your attempts didn't work out. It just didn't work out. But look where you are. Reflect on how you're thinking. No matter what state you're in, no matter what you're hooked on, no matter what you, the hang-ups you still have, you were delivered from some things that should have taken you. Right? It should have taken you. Right? Some of you, some of you have paid the ultimate price. Some of us did things really dumb. It caused us to go, you know, people are incarcerated. People were hospitalized and, you know, people went through all sorts of things. But it was the living God through Christ who got hold of us. He called us. We pretty much gave up on him, didn't we? And we just sat there waiting for fate to come. Remember? Remember how you got to the end of this matter and you just waited for fate to come? You said, well, it's coming. There's nothing I can do about it. But it didn't come. Your father said no. And here you are. When you look back on those times, you're separated from the anguish you went through. But you certainly remember what you were in. It was your father through Christ who delivered you. It's important that we always reflect and see how we were delivered. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, and God said to his own people, the day you forget how it delivered you out of Egypt, I'm going to paraphrase, is the day you're going back into your sinful life. It is true, right? Lord knows I've been in some situations uh, I never thought I'd make it out of. But the Lord delivered me from that. I had no power to do it. Nobody else had power to do it. But the Lord did. Now, what does that do? It gives you confidence. That's why you can't forget it. Here's how it gives you confidence. And confidence, by the way, is something lacking. For quite a few people. When you have confidence in Christ, it's almost impossible to get upset. I'm telling you the truth. And possibly you don't know it because your confidence in Christ is not where it can be. Notice I did not say where it should be. There's no mandate. Nobody has. No one can tell you where you should be in Christ. No one can. God knows the path of your life. Nobody else does. So don't let anybody tell you where you should be. God knows where you should be. Man does not. Everybody's operating at a different level, different timings, right? Different things happen. Don't, don't let people tell you that. That is quite discouraging. Anyway, 
when you look back on those things you were delivered from, they're extremely important because they build confidence in Christ. See, he delivered you from the impossible more than once. But how many times have you looked back on that situation? I mean, truly looked back and remembered everything to see how your father delivered you. I mean, the pain, the anguish, of course, you're disconnected from that pain and anguish, but you can remember you went through it. What was happening in your life at that time? What was stolen from you in your life at that time you thought was stolen? What you were separated from in your life at that time? The things you lost? Look back on all of it and say, Lord, you delivered me. Here I am, hunting, searching for you, still following you. You delivered me. See, you were back there. You thought you lost things in life, didn't you? Hmm? How many think they've, they've had some major losses in, in the... In a human sense, I'll say, all of us have losses. We do. We have losses. Right? But take note of something. Many of you were holding on to things, right? Now follow me on this, please. Because remember, to reflect back on what you were delivered from will build your confidence right now today. Many of you, you, you thought you had great losses. And indeed, some of these losses were horrific. Right? Some people lost everything. Everything. And it truly hurt. I want you to think about something. How many of you bit off more than you can chew in life? Here's what I'm saying by that. Suppose you were in a house. The house mortgage was $4,000 a month. You had a drop in income and couldn't support it. For the sake of your family, you were killing yourself to try and maintain appearances to try and keep everything so that everybody could be happy, right? You were dying, starving to death. Things were happening to you health-wise, and no one was the wiser, but you knew. You were tired at the end of your rope, but you were doing all of what you could to hold on to it. Then all of a sudden, your plan collapsed. Something didn't work out. You ended up losing your house. It was terrible. Could have cost you your family. Could have cost you many things. But then you look back on that time. And when all that was gone, you were forced to show yourself in an honest light. And here's what that means. That means before you were holding up appearances, doing everything you could do to make everybody happy around you and to hold up appearances of those who knew you. When it was gone, you had no choice but to say, folks, here I am without the perks. I don't have enough money to have this. And that I defaulted on that, it's gone. But you were free of the burden. Did you notice the weight that came off? Right? The weight, you ever hear that term, bittersweet? Bittersweet, that term. The weights came off. You didn't have to hold up appearances. People looked at you and they possibly scoffed you, talked about you and everything else. You said, oh, well, that's how they think of me. They were once my friends, but now they, you know, they're scoffing and mocking, looking sideways at me and oh well. And then you met new people. But that burden was gone. And when the burden was gone, when you realized the burden was gone and you were living a little bit freer than what you were, that's when you understood that that house and those things had you in a prison. They imprisoned you. You were in jail. With all your freedom, with all of what you had, you were in prison. And you could not escape. There was no way out. Isn't that something? So God did, he did some things. Through your calamity, he took the weights off. He gave you a fresh start. You could then present yourself to people as you truly were without the weights holding up appearances. Living in that freedom, that liberty. Hmm? Never forget that. That's going to become important, especially right now. For some of us, he did this more than once because we went right back to go right back in this similar situation with more ways than we said, oh, no, I did it again. But at least this time we identified we did it again. The first time we had no idea. We had no idea the weights could get so heavy. Right? There are many situations like that. How many of you have lost people in your life? 
you thought that person would be in your life for the rest of your life. No matter what you did, you could not repair the brokenness. No matter what you did, you sacrificed everything that you could sacrifice. And no matter what you did, it only made that situation worse. Well, after a time goes by, because you're very hurt, and many, many of you guys out there, you probably say, and because I did that once, I said, I'd rather go back to combat naked and get shot to pieces than to go through a heartbreak again. Right? Well, I did. So, but, but, how many of you understand that in that loss, what you thought was a loss, was God freeing you from a person that was changing you into being someone you were never meant to be in the first place? See, here's the truth. You could not be yourself around this person. You had to change into somebody else to be accepted. You were never accepted for who you were. You remember that? Never. And in fact, if anything of who you were surfaced, they would change in a heartbeat. You never knew who they were from time to time. You never knew. You had to live a life of surrender to someone. It all fell apart. You tried to hold on to it. No matter what you did, it, it didn't matter what you did. It kept falling apart until it ended. Now, normally when the Lord does this, he'll normally do it in a way where you can maintain the word, believe it or not. But you separated. And you had this time of emptiness. Right? A true emptiness of failure. It seems like you were a failure. It hurt because things that were very close to you were pushed away, all sorts of things. But did you notice, did you notice, upon the repair side of that, right, you could truly become who God had put in you in the first place. You no longer had to hide your devotion to Christ, your quirky ways. You didn't have to hide it. Again, you could then exercise liberty. And that's something. You were released from a prison you could not see, that you could not get out of. That person became your world, and the Lord took, it seems like the Lord took that world away. But let me share this with you. Did you not know you can never lose anything that belongs to you? You know that? Did you notice at the beginning of the relationship, when I need you to go way back, if it was over a relationship, did you notice that you looked at that person and you were pleased? But also, you looked into the person at what could be. Stay with me. You looked at that person and you imagined yourself of what could be. And you formed a vision in your head. And you loved that vision in your head. And you wanted that person to start fitting that vision in your head. Hear me on this. For some, you fell in love with the vision. You did not see what the person actually was. So that when the person persisted in not changing to what the vision said they could be, it caused problems. Right? At any rate. It all fell apart. You felt like, some of you probably felt like the lowest person of lows. If you had children, it's even a greater impact. What you don't know, what you never knew, was this time that we're in right now was coming. You didn't know that. You did not know how immoral society would become. You didn't know about the divide, even right now, between those who believe and those who don't. You didn't know that. You did not know the practices a person would then have in this common day, which would truly separate them from righteousness. And also, you were trying to hold on to something you already knew you were not supposed to hold on to. See, because in the beginning, you got the warning. We ignore that warning, we do. But we get the warning. Here's the warning. It's when you look at a person and you're saying to yourself, this person is no, no, no. But then what do you do? 
because the person is pleasing to the eye. Right? Because they can fit the vision. You stop seeing any warning signs and you go headlong into it. Somebody supported the warning. But out of pride, most often we deny it, don't we? Somebody else supported that warning. It came more than once. And you knew it internally. And when it started to fall apart, we don't want to think about the people who warned us. We don't want to think about the warning signs we saw. We're trying to hold on to everything because it becomes our world. Two things happened. Number one, you cannot lose what belongs to you. If something belongs to you, you can do anything you want to it. It's yours. It's coming back always. Right? If something never belongs to you, if it does not belong to you, right? You can hold on to it all day. The moment you blink your eyes, it's gone. The moment you fall asleep, it's out of there. Right? You cannot hold on to what does not belong to you. Here's a big one. Did you really think that your father would have you substitute him with somebody else on the earth? See, because you didn't tell anybody, but internally, you did raise that person up to a very high level. They became everything to you, and that's why you were willing to sacrifice everything to stay in it. Had you continued on that path, your relationship with Christ would have been slim to none. You would have changed, been altered, just to please the person. In fact, the Lord probably gave you a supernatural message. But in order for you to stay in that marriage, you would have to step away from him. You would have to forego your faith. That means the other person could have been a Christian, but one of those weird type Christians, you know, with the values of weird things. See, because the Lord was freeing you. He knew the time you were coming into. He knew about this time. He knew it. So what has he been doing? What has the Lord truly been doing through all your hurts and troubles and losses and mishaps? What has he been doing? He's been setting you at liberty. Can you see that now? He's been freeing you from vices in the world. He's been keeping you from chains that would have killed you. He's been saving your souls big time. Can you see that? He did not suffer any of it to take you. He didn't. He allowed all of us to have reminders because we need those reminders. But you're free. You're free. Listen to me. You still may have a drinking problem. You still may have a medication problem, but you're free. Do you hear me? You're free because the Lord will not suffer anything to bind you. You are not to be bound. And you know what the biggest telltale sign of this is? Those of you who are not to be bound, while everybody else desperately needed things of the world, you did not. How many times did you look at people and say, oh my gosh, you mean to tell me these people would do that for that? I don't understand what they're thinking about. They can go without that. I don't need that. I really don't. How many of you thought it was strange that you would even think that way? That you could go without what other people desperately needed? Hmm? See, something has been happening all this time. Oh, it's been happening. So all those issues and problems and hang-ups and things that you may still have. Think about what the Lord freed you from. Think about what he actually choreographed in your life to set you free. Do you really think he's going to stop now? Oh, no. Nope. Nope and nope again. No. Yes, your situation may seem impossible. So what? You serve a God that does things above the natural. Hmm? He'll never stop. He won't. You see, he kept you when nobody else would. When you look back on these things in your life, that should build your confidence of his resolve. He'll go to great lengths to make sure that you're set at liberty. 
great lengths. That's despite your sin, despite what you have done. He desires salvation upon you, total salvation. And he never stopped in that process in your life. Can you see that now? Can you see that? That's why there's no need to revisit the past to seek to go back there. But to look upon the past and to see the delivering hand of the Most High that's been involved in your life from day one. You've been set up to be set at liberty from day one. Because these days were always coming. Always coming. And as these days approach, so will you start to stand up in ways you never thought possible. The Lord is very interested in you. He's very committed to you. And his commitment to you, that is your life. That is your security. Now, in this day and age that we live in, many great vices are coming to attach themselves to people. Because of what you went through, you can somewhat see these vices. But you may not be able to explain them to anybody right now. Some of you have tried, and they will not listen, will they? You've tried. You tried to tell people what you saw, but they would not listen, would they? They wouldn't hear you. So long as people have an alternative like we did so long ago, why would they listen to somebody who's trying to tell them of a future that nobody of the world wants? Right? But those days are ending too. You guys read about a great many sorrowful things in the Bible. Do you not know that these things are sorrowful? Not for you. For the world. You may see them. You may be beside someone who's going through it. But see, your heart is different. Your mind is different. Your soul is different. You'll be different in these times. That's why it never hurts to speak about the whole thing, not half of it. The Lord wants us fully equipped, not halfway equipped. That's, folks, that's why people in the body of Christ are so incredibly important. Incredibly important. That makes you guys so much more important than you ever thought. These days are not going to slow down anymore. Can you guys feel the era of grace and mercy ending? Can you feel it ending? My, my. So then that means this. You were always meant to live by the Holy Word of God, not the world, not the world's words. See, the world's world, their words failed you. Boy, that's a tongue twister. The world's words failed you. Their ideas failed you, but your fathers did not. They think the opposite, right? You lived through it. You've tried it the way of the world. Haven't we? If we are truthful, we have lived a life by the world's decree. And it failed us over and over and over and over and over again. We know that. Now it's time to commit fully to the words of our Father, not by force. Listen to me, not by force. Not by force. No. But as you learn them, start to walk in them at your own leisure. Based on what you desire. Hmm? Absolute freedom. The Lord does everything in absolute freedom. He's not going to, because he didn't do anything by force. You know how people say, well, what you need to do is this. Your father does not do that. Do you know why? That's forceful. If God was forceful, all of us would be in the kingdom of heaven. And it wouldn't matter what you did down here. But he's not, not forcing any of us to abandon sin. No, nope, he's not doing that. No, what he did was showed us what sin was, didn't he? He did. He showed us we were face to face with the sin we committed. What do we end up saying? 
Oh, no, this isn't for me. How many of you said that to the sinful things you did in life? You said, no, this isn't for me. I may be stuck in it now, but I won't be here for long. This is not for me. Hmm. How many have said that? I got to let this go. Nobody forced you to go into that conversation. It's when you saw what sin truly was. It's when you saw the ending of it. Many of you have faced that ending multiple times. It's like breaking free of a cocoon that's been around you all your life. And you're starting to see things differently. Your age does not matter. We got a 90, 90, what was the 94-year-old person in COT who types like a spring chicken. Nobody has ever guessed this person's age, and it's so funny. This person is 94. But that person wasn't always like that. Do you know this person was hospitalized and they started to listen to COT in the hospital? Who does that? Now they're in their own townhouse, I believe it is, right? Under their own care, typing away. Why? Because they can see. You can see. See, when you're blind, if you were in a beautiful place but you were blind... You'd never get happy about the scenery. You'd never get you'd never get excited about the colors. You'd never be in awe to the arrangement around you. But if your eyes were to ever be opened, your draw would drop. You would perceive the beauty all around you. You'd be so much more thankful for what you're seeing. Hmm? The Lord is opening up your eyes. Your eyes. And it's up to us because God doesn't do anything by force. But he put all of us here for each other. Do you know that? Think about it. How many times have you gone to someone and you didn't force them to listen to you or anything else, but you agreed with all patience to work on their timing? In other words, you would wait for as long as it took to explain simple things to them. How many did that? How many of you guys did that? You know what that is. You know what it is to stand by a person for a long time. Why? Because you really want them to make it in that specific thing. And so you offer your help. When you offer your true help, you're not looking for anything in return. You're not. You just offer everything about yourself. And you do it with, with the very thing God teaches us. You do it with all patience. Have you noticed you're never in a rush? When you really love someone and you really want that person to advance, you really want that person to get ahead, you never rush the person. You'll wait for a lifetime if necessary. You'll sacrifice everything if necessary. You guys know what that is. There's another word for what I just said. I just described something to you that's in you naturally, and that's called love, L-O-V-E. That's L-O-V-E. That means that person can call you every name in the book and it will not discourage you from waiting on that person, from, from sacrificing for that person. Do you know that that is love encapsulated? But let me explain this to you. If you were to do that to a person, have all patience with them, if you were willing to wait a thousand lifetimes just so you could help the person and you would never complain, that love that you're displaying at that moment would never compare to the love God has for you. Think about your sinful times. Your father never looked away. Think about the times you rejected him and his word. He never pushed you aside. Never. He never did that. Think about that. There was nothing you could have done that would have separated you from the love of God. Now you know why the apostle said what he said. Because you have an example of that type of love in your life from you to somebody else. You knew what you were willing to do. You knew what you were willing to do. Well, your father's more than willing. He's doing it. You know what that means? You are secured in his love. And the seal of that love 
is Jesus of Nazareth. And in this time that we live in, it is so incredibly important that we understand where that confidence is coming from, to harness from our lives the truth of it. And you know what the truth is? God never forced any of us. He stood by and he waited on it. Listen, God's been operating in our timing, not his own. Isn't that awesome? That's why he said, that's why the Bible says God is not slack concerning uh, uh, slackness. This men count slackness, but God is long suffering to us. Right? He's long suffering. He puts up with everything for a long time for our sakes. What if God would have come 25 years ago? Many of us would have gone straight to the pit, right? So he was not going to come then. Why? Because you would have been lost. That's why things seem to be so long. That's why everything is overdue. It is. Everything is overdue. So the timing of those things of our Father is based on you. It's based on his love for you. That's why we all have an urgency, don't we? We have an urgency in our spirits. We cannot understand ourselves. We do. And people are starting to get it together. They really are. That urgency is our father saying, okay, children, now is that time I'm coming. I won't extend the time you had in the past, but I will secure you. He will. The Lord also said he would do a quick work in these times. I believe he is. I believe he is. He is. All of us are here right now. Many of us have things undone. But never forget the Lord is gracious and kind. He's kind. He's kind to the unthankful. Do you know that? Do you know the Bible says that? Do you guys know that? My goodness. Some people, they don't know who the Father is. They're always saying God's going to get you. And we're some of us are guilty of that too, right? But the truth is, God has no desire in getting us. He wants to get us in a secure position where we will never be lost. He knows the inner desires of your heart. He does. He does. He does. But now we know we live in a time when things are unfolding. Your confidence in this time is critical. So to muster that confidence in this present day is to look back in your life at true deliverance taking place all throughout your years, to understand that you didn't lose anything because everything that belongs to you can never be lost. All of us were trying to hold on to things that were not ours. What belongs to you awaits you. Do you hear me? It does not await anybody else. Some of you, you will have somebody come alongside you. Seems like it's too late wrong. Do you know that God will train two people and bring them up before he introduces them? He surely will. That the blessings of the Lord will never be regretted. It's like wisdom. In the Bible it says wisdom from above is without regret. It's without regret. The blessings of the Lord are without regret either. So if he blesses us with anything, blessing means to empower. If he empowers us with something, we're not going to end up saying, I was, I, I, I was better off without it. We're not going to do that. He's setting all of you up for absolute and full deliverance. The times we're heading into, they're going to sound harsh. There are going to be lots of elements that make you scratch your head. All of it. All of it's important. You have those of your brothers and your sisters who are waking up right now, but you have some that will only pay attention at a given time. But you also have the wicked. 
before the wicked face the Lord, they will not have an excuse. And you know what that means? You live in the era of grace and mercy. We walk by faith, so nothing is proven to us. We do what we do by genuineness that was put in our spirits from the beginning, so we act on that. What about those who were truly guilty? If God were to come right now, they would truly say, well, you know, I don't have any proof that God was real, and so that's why I doubt it. I couldn't quite believe anything outside of the scientific method, and so that's why I doubt it. So then example time is coming. Not for us, but for them. For them. And when it comes for them, it's going to hurt. It'll hurt. It'll hurt because they don't want to see it and they're not going to act in righteousness according to it when they're close to it. And all those who fell for Satan, Satan desires to rip their heads off. He does. They just don't know it. So that earthly persecution will ultimately be upon all those who joined for the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of the beast. But you are to be absolutely liberated. And I deem, I I think it's important that we go over everything in these times according to truth. See, there are still things I have to share with you guys. I'm not really concerned about what anybody thinks about it. Do you know why? Because I know that they're going to see it. Before they clock out, they're going to see it. I already know that. But imagine somebody saying something before it happens. And they explain it. And they explain why it came. And somebody else remember that. And is connected to Christ. How many people would then have that in their heads and say, Lord, forgive me? At that very moment. At the very moment, they would say, Lord, forgive me. I see it now. I know it took, I know it took some proof, but I see it now. It's just like when Jesus, he did miracles. In sight of all people, in view of all people, he did miracles. And they believed because of the miracles. They believed because he fed them. They believed because of what they saw. And he kept telling us and he kept telling them in the New Testament, he did what he did that they would believe upon his name. He kept telling them. Because he, back during his time, the time of Christ, he was, he was a new character that came on the scene claiming, everybody was claiming he was a Messiah, but many had come before and people didn't know what to believe. But they could not deny the authenticity of the miracles. The Pharisees got angry at it. They tried to condemn him. They, they didn't want to see him as the Messiah. But God put the truth in the followers, didn't he? And they recognized him beyond those miracles. They got excited by little tiny things that God gave them recognition of. And they believed. Peter was one of the greatest examples. One of the greatest, because there's a greater example, greater than Peter, of faith. But Peter was one of them. When he told Jesus he was the Christ, And Jesus told him that flesh and blood did not reveal that to him, but his Father in heaven. And that's who the church is. The church is composed of those of whom the Father has put the identification of Christ inside. Do you hear me? Not by proof, but by the Father putting the identity of Christ in their souls. Hmm? You know, you guys did the same thing Peter did. Peter looked at Jesus and said, you are the Christ. That gives me chills thinking about that. But you guys did the same thing. Let me explain to you how. You remember your troubled life? Remember that? In your troubles in your life, there were times that came. And you indeed started to pray. You remember that? You did. And in that moment of prayer, guess what you said? You said, Jesus, you are Lord. I know it's you. You said that. You said that. 
on your own without being prompted. You said the same thing Peter said. You said that you are Lord. You remember that? You said it with a boldness and absoluteness. You said it without witnesses, which means that was your integral moment. You proclaimed it because you knew it. You did the same thing Peter said. And guess what that means? Now you know what you're truly a part of. You're truly a part of the ecclesia, the church. Mm -hmm. Do you see all of what God has had unfolding in your life? My goodness, and it's very consistent with the word of God. All that will serve the individual. It will serve you in these days to come. These days to come, we're going to try humanity on a very different level. We have a work, we have a work to do, all of us do, every single last one of you do. When I come back from this break, we're going to start discussing it. Well, we have a, we have a lot. We have a lot to get done. It's my firm belief. We are going to get it done. We'll be back in a minute, right here at COT. All right, we're back. Let's see. Okay, we're fully back. Now we're fully back. Well, I hope you guys are ready for the Middle East to erupt without notice. Hope that you guys are fully prepared for that. They will ultimately do that. And from here, you guys will not. You may not like the results. It's very difficult to see what's going to happen in these end days. But I'll tell you something before we go any further. We did. We all have our outlook, but we're looking at the end times from a human perspective, from an infant perspective. It's kind of like looking at space, and yet we've not been out to the farther reaches of space, but we can describe everything about it. Kind of like spirits, right? People describe spirits. They were not born in that realm, went to school in that realm, and then all of a sudden jumped in this realm to tell everybody about that realm. They didn't do that, but they act like they have. So keep that in mind, and let's never fight over that, but deeply consider the words of truth over any idea we would have. The Bible is uh, quite notable for the unfolding of events, just as it was written. For the most part, if we would only leave things alone, right, we could then have that truth revealed to us. But you live in that time. You do. We also live in a time of massive calamities. Like, uh, the, I'm going to call it the butterfly storm that will hit probably in under six days. I'm going to call it a butterfly storm. When you see it, you'll see why. That's from extended modeling, by the way. That storm is going to be quite fierce. This year, countries will be waterlogged. I mean, waterlogged, right? I don't look forward to that. I don't. Uh, nevertheless, we live in a time where these things will take place and continue to take place. The storms are getting pretty rough, even with volcanic eruptions. And if Mexico goes, you guys do understand one of my greatest concerns about Mexico, right? If Mexico and Chile and Peru and those places begin to go, California will follow. So will well, I hate to say it because I'm, 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 sometimes I'm alone in my own personal factors, right? But, but so will the Grand Canyons. I know that folks are worried about Yellowstone. There are deeper, there, there are greater worries than Yellowstone. Tom Omasip is one of them. It's going to continue to wake up and spread. The ocean will be the doom of a great many. It will. It will. 
so again, right? Again, these things we live in the middle of, right? The fog is coming. I'm going to call it the fog, a perpetual fog. And when it becomes foggy, there's going to be a lot of mischief. Our atmosphere is going to change abruptly, it seems. Abruptly. It's going to be a foggy time. You guys know crime is going to be at a maximum. Right? I'll tell you something about the spiritual realm, though. You cannot reap what you have not sown. You can't. This is why I, I desire everybody to be very careful and thoughtful about what they do. In this time, I'm going to give you an example. You'll see it with your own eyes. Many of you, uh, you may have to live it so that you will understand it. Anything you desire upon another person, you will have to endure. You will. I want you guys to give it a Deep, deep thought. Anything you desire upon a person. You're going to have to endure it yourselves. That's not punishment. Right? It's part of the Lord allowing us to see a process. We may not believe in. Hmm? May not believe in that. Somebody says, Michael, we at the time where the angel is going to pour out the bowl on the sun. I believe the sun is going to do damage to the earth before the vials are poured out. I do. The vials are part of God's wrath. And the Bible says we're not appointed to his wrath. In fact, we read, we read about that time. And if you take note, a transition had to happen prior to that time. And so in the middle of that time, God still has provisions for his people. The revelation tells you who's here on this earth and who is not. The problem is, here. here's the problem. The problem is like we discussed the other day, and I know people don't like this, but all too often we think about people leaving at the same time. The rapture. What people forget is people leave every single day. Every day. In Isaiah it says, few men are left on the face of the earth. Right? Bible the Lord has shown me, I absolutely know that to be true. Absolutely. In fact, in just about all my dreams, there are no children on the earth. No children. None, 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 none. I believe in the word and how it's laid out. I don't necessarily believe in the rational things of mankind. If you take note, nothing has been rational about what's been happening. Nothing. Has it? Nothing. So, when I read Revelation, I can see it for what it is. And I normally leave it at that. Plus, there's a warning not to add to or take away from anything in Revelation. If you do, the plagues will be added to you or your portion of eternal life is going to be taken away. So I'm not messing with uh, trying to come up with some theory about Revelation. I'm not going to do that. It will unfold as the Lord told us, right? It will. I am concerned about other people. See, we already know that without the Lord, we can't survive in certain times. We can't. So I have great confidence, right? You're not going to go through anything you cannot handle. How do we know that? The Lord said he'd never place upon you that which you cannot bear. He's not going to have you in a position that you'll be fully compromised. That's just not going to happen. Not going to happen. So I, I trust the most High. What about you guys? I, I truly do trust him. I do. He's gotten me out of so much. I have no choice but to trust him. I also trust his methods and I can see the truth behind how things unfold. One of the biggest issues in this day and age is people cannot see evil for what it is. They continue to label based on their eyes what is good and what is bad. Take a person, for example. Of all the people you know in life, you only know about 5% of the person. The 95% you don't know. The greater portion of a person is hidden. 
never conveyed, never shown. You only see the physical side of things, and based on the word of God, the physical side of things does not reflect who a person is. It just doesn't. A person is not the sum total of their deeds. They are not. I know people like these scenes writing, sorry, that's not the case. A thief was on the cross with Christ. In the same day he walked with him in paradise. If anybody would have looked at the deeds of that thief, they would have said, you're not going to make it, dude. But he did. Jesus confirmed that. Right? Without Christ, I wouldn't make it. You might as well say I'm a murderer. Might as well say that. A murderer of a great many. Without Christ, I wouldn't make it either. We know I'd make it. Right? With Christ, I am forgiven. That's why I don't walk by sight. I don't care what a situation looks like. I will never utter a future based on anything I see. I'll never do that. Already made that mistake quite a few times in life. And I know that surprises have come to mankind in the very area they couldn't see every single time. Every single time. So whatever they're... Listen, the world... The Bible says the world does not have the truth, neither can it have it, because it can't see it. Now, if the world does not have the truth, and the world makes a forecast about something, you know it's not going to be right. If everybody on earth believes in a specific thing, right, it's not right. Because the Lord said the world hated him, and it sought to kill him. Well, the world has to speak things that they love. So if the world loves it, how can it be right and righteous. It is not. It's not. The timing of Revelation, all these events from Revelation, I get, you guys know I get excited when I read Revelation because we're living in those times now. And it's, it's, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of you guys have lost your enthusiasm. You have. Probably from failed prophecies. But do you know why you had to go through that? Do you know why? You guys were willing for the end to come just for you in 2012. You were all excited. Yes, I'm about to leave and leave everybody behind. Forget about them. That's not the frame of mind we're supposed to have. Is it? If Jesus died for us and we were lost and we are truly our father's children, then wouldn't we have the same heart for somebody else? I don't want to be here when things erupt on this earth. I don't. I do not want to leave anybody I could have helped. I did that once. And a person died. And it happened more than once. Right? I left a few people in an area. And they died. Because I left. Right? Could they have survived? Sure, they could have. But I left. I'm not doing that again. The Lord showed me what that was. Because then something happened to me. And I was left for a long time. And death would have been better than what I went through. Even right now, I'm not willing to leave people behind. That's why there have been folks who have cursed me out. And I pray for them every single night. I do. I won't stop thinking about them. Right? Won't do that. Can't do that. So that's the only controversy I have about the end times. I do not want to go early. I'm going to go when the Lord calls me. And I trust him and his judgment. So I need not rush anything. God knows when he's going to get me. He already showed me certain things I have to go through. Not one of them has failed. Not one thing has failed. And that's the way it is. But I trust him. I trust him. Trust him. Somebody says, can you re-clarify what happened in Miami Mall? Is it saying online we may see auroras in New Jersey? Is that one of the signs before this plant comes by? Well, what happened in Miami? I'm, I'm my personal belief based upon what I looked at is people encountered a demonic entity. And it left a residue uh, with, with um, dozens of kids having the same night terrors. 
That's what I believe happened. I believe that everything was warped out of proportion, but there are people there that did see what they saw, and it was recorded. And it's not the only time that happened. Now, it's easy for me, right? Easy for me to just say that nonchalantly. It is. I believe that. Um, I don't believe in any other narrative because I know how the game works. Demonic entities are slick willies. People have had encounters you wouldn't believe. They've seen large craft you wouldn't believe. There have been people standing beside each other. One saw a big craft, the other did not. What does that tell you? What's that tell you right there? How can one person see a huge craft and the other person does not? Why is it then when a bunch of people are together, they see orbs of light? Hardly never do they see anything so, you know, defined. Individually, they see different things. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? All right. In fact, in what year was that? Uh, where's, where were the admins at? That? I believe that was 2013. I told you guys, I'm looking at this notebook. And in this notebook was a plan. And I warned everybody. I said, listen, they're coming out with this paranormal programming. It's going to be everywhere. Everything is going to be about ghost busting and spirits and everything else. You guys remember that? Then it came out. Somebody even told me, oh, no, because I'm Illuminati. They wouldn't do anything like that. Of course, I shrugged those things off. I sat there and saw the notebook. I saw the outline of what they are doing. Now, why was it in a notebook? Because I want people to be open to all sorts of spirits because we live in the end days. But then somehow all this gets twisted in these times. You still have people afraid of those things that are coming out of the bombless pit. Why would any Christian be afraid of anything that comes out of the bottomless pit? They're commanded to, touch, to not touch any green thing or any tree. They're commanded not to touch anybody with the seal of God on their foreheads. Only those men who don't have the seal of God on their foreheads are to be tormented. They're not to kill them, just to torment them five months. And in those days, men will seek death, but will not find it. So why would a Christian be afraid of anything that comes out of the bottomless pit? If your name is in the book of life, you got no issue. Many of you have had your encounters with spirits. You have. You have similar stories. It's one of those taboo subjects, and so you guys don't talk amongst each other. Because if you did, you would notice some similarities. Upon noticing that, well, you'd no longer be receptive to these things. You would shut them down as soon as they come with a fly swatter. That's what I do these days. I have no interest in those things. I don't. None. But you have a lot of people that do. And God gave man dominion over the earth. So when man has a desire to see something, man is the one with the authority to call things forward. When a person is sitting there with a desire to see something, they're calling it forward. When you have enough people that do that, that thing will come forward. See how that works? It's going to come forward. Hmm. Somebody said, question, is it big locusts coming out of the pit? We don't exactly know. It never said locusts were coming out of the pit. It said they were like locusts, like unto locusts. Right? So it gave a comparison of what they were like. John on the Isle of Patmos only saw horse buggies, things like that, and bugs. So he had to relate it to something he saw. Those three unclean spirits, for example. Really think about this. The three unclean spirits... It said they were like frogs. It did not call them frogs. But you guys sit there and you see the depiction of these so-called aliens all over the place, don't you? They have the big eyes. What is a frog known for, by the way? Big eyeballs. Correct? Isn't a frog known for big eyes? So if a person, if, if you were back then and God showed you 
some of these things of today. You could only compare them with those things that were alive in that time. So you too might say, well, is it, you know, that thing is like a frog. Look at those big eyes. You had nothing else to compare it to. Right? Nothing. A helicopter, for example. I remember one time I used that as an example here in COT that John couldn't just blurt out, you know, oh, yes, those things that have the teeth of lions, the hair of a woman, the sting was in their tails, and they made the sound of many chariots. That sounds just like helicopter blades, doesn't it? It does. It really does. So we don't know what it's going to be, right? We look in the book of Joel. You know that army that that uh, that they didn't break their ranks when when you know when one fell or something like that when one was thrust through they didn't break their ranks. Do you not know God called that His bug army? Do you not do you know that? It's in Joel. One of the issues is. Sometimes we read a portion of something and we never read the whole thing. If we were to go through the book of Joel, your eyes would open wide. You'd say, what? I never saw that there before. Once you read the complete thing, you start to see similarities between Joel and Revelation. Hmm. Someone says, you said on Passball last night that we should prepare for June, July. Yes, you should. People should prepare for July. Nobody's warning people about July. They see the rainfall. Asia, and there are places that went underwater in the last five days. People have been talking about entire places being flooded out, and it's not on mainstream media. In the last five to ten days, look at how many places have gone underwater. Just look. Many people in those, there are people in those places Right now, you know what they're saying? It's the water event Mike was talking about is what they're saying. Why? Because one person sent pictures, and as far as they could see, it was water all over the place. And it's just beginning. Only beginning. Asia is having one of the hottest times they've ever had. You don't see that reported anywhere either. It is brutal over there, and all that's coming here. All of it is. We're going to face heat. We just did not face before. Unless God's mercy steps in, that will happen. Right? If God is merciful, he can mitigate that. But places are burning up right now. It's messing up the power grid, everything else. The U.S. power grid cannot take what's happening to it. It can't take it. There are going to be rolling blackouts in the USA. I already saw that. So get ready for rolling blackouts all throughout the USA. All throughout it. That means somebody else is going to control when you can use power, when you cannot. And at the same time, they have the rolling blackouts. The fuel charges are going way up. Somebody said, Mike, the bright light that used to come to you. What was that? Was that bad? You know what? To this very day, listen to me. It, just to explain that. There were too many times I would lay on my stomach. I'd be thinking of reading the Bible, right? And I always slept on my stomach with the sheet over my head. And I would read like that. Or, you know, I would, I would sit there and contemplate about things. And uh, too many times a bright, bright, super bright sphere would be just right in front of my face. Now, as soon as it showed up, the only thing I felt was an overwhelming peace and kapoof. I'm out of there, right? I don't know anything else. It wasn't daydreaming. It wasn't sleeping or anything like that. It's not what it was. You could feel the heat from it. As it came close, you could feel the heat, but it was it was a warmth, but it was not a, a, a uncomfortable warmth, right? It wasn't like that. I believe that's something of our father. Could it be something of decepting? You better believe it, because Satan will manifest himself as an angel of light. Never forget that. Having a peaceful feeling does not qualify to be holy either. There are people, people are going to go through a phenomenon. They're going to feel a euphoria and peace from UFOs. People do it right now. 
from UFOs. That's going to spread. It's going to become quite uh, popular. And to the point where people desire nothing more than to look upon them. Miracles will happen because of those things. For example, the person that was healed. Of bronchitis. Another person whose heart was healed. They needed a, a heart surgery. Open, open heart surgery. to have their. Uh, they were suffering from congestive heart failure. They have an encounter and they're totally healed. The doctors can't explain it. People who, who have had deep scars, physical scars, right? They have their encounter, no scars. Teeth being renewed, all sorts of weird things happening because of those. That does not make them holy, and this is going to be the problem. Just because a person is healed does not make the thing holy. It doesn't make the thing holy. That's going to fool some people. The Lord told us to try every spirit to see if it is of God or not. Because any spirit that denies that Jesus came in the flesh, that he died on the cross and went through what he went through and was raised from the dead, that, that is an antichrist spirit. That's how you try it. For some reason, spirits, well, they, the, the bad ones are quite prideful. They cannot defy you. Think about something. Why haven't the demons just taken over all mankind? I'll tell you why. They cannot defy you. Why would they sneak around corners and everything else? Why? Because they cannot defy you. God gave you authority and dominion, not them. When he sends the archangels, they serve mankind. He gave you dominion, not them. So they sneak around and seduce people into believing in certain weird things first, that that person would never exercise authority over them. That person would only be intrigued and invite them in even further. Hmm? This what's happening right now before your eyes with these shows on television. They're cultivating people. Why? Because the time is coming. When not one spot in the sky is going to be empty. Not one spot. And in that day, people are going to drop the facade. They're, most people who don't want to talk about that stuff, they're scared to death of the consequences of it. They know the implications of it. And it scares them to pieces. Some of you are comfortable. You've seen it so much, you're comfortable with it. It's no big deal. And you'll be around to help other people stay on track with the Lord during that time. Still, other folks have no defense whatsoever. They'll be totally swept up by them. Totally swept up. Hope that's not any of you guys. Really hope it's not. And to my knowledge, they are, they, I'm going to just say they, they are supposed to introduce themselves almost immediately beyond any sanctioned reports, investigations, or anything else. They're going to come out on their own. All of them operate by a clock. That clock is counting backwards. To a war, the war, the number one war of all times, all of them operate by that clock. They're doing exactly what it says in the book of Daniel. Exactly. They know they have a short time. They do. All right, where are we at? What time is it? Oh, let me answer some of your questions, guys. Please. But it says, uh, are you aware of a project? Oh. Well, I've heard of that. Probably not a good thing to inform or deny that one, is it? Like Looking Glass when it first started. How does the safe elevation live at? 
Well, I'm, I'm put to you this way. If you go to a high elevation, you're liable to burn up. You go to a low elevation, you're liable to be caught in a flood. You are. And I, I know that people have watched these Hollywood movies. Let's talk realistically for a second. We know what's happening with the sun. It's getting hot. You go up to a high altitude, you're going to be exposed to a massive amount of radiation. Right? It, it's no secret that ionizing radiation is coming closer and closer to the surface of the Earth, which is why I have a deep concern about the D-layer in the ionosphere, right? Which is 35 to 55 miles above the Earth. I have an issue with that. The, the What just happened, right? If it inundates that area, we're in trouble, right? But that's the D region, 35 to 55. E region is 55 to 90 miles. A little better. F region. Is 90 miles plus. Um, and then there are subregions in the F region. One is 90 to 150 miles. One is uh, F2 region is 150 to 300 miles. All of them play an important role in radio communications, right? Dealing with ionized radiation. Most people don't know the process of a solar flare in the, in the first place. So let, let me explain this real quick, real quick, just real quick. It, very quick, okay? Just real quick. So, the upper atmosphere, the ionosphere, absorbs high-energy electromagnetic radiation from solar flares. It prevents it from reaching the surface of the Earth. The ionosphere itself, which, by the way, by the way, absorbs high-energy electromagnetic radiation, is made up of three regions, D, E, and F. Right? The electron density... The highest electron density is in the F area of the ionosphere. And the ionosphere does what? It absorbs high-energy electromagnetic radiation from solar flares, right? So, in the daylight, the sun's X-rays and UV light, um, when it's increased, the, the, that ionization of the DNA layers takes place, right? Stronger flares ionize the lower levels of that atmosphere like the one that just went off. Now, when it ionizes it, that becomes very dangerous radiation. All right, very dangerous. It can knock the nuclei out of things, which means it can corrupt your DNA, which means you can give birth to offsprings with, that will be prone to leukemia, uh, things like that. And it can also give you bad sores. Um, actually, it can give you symptoms, radiation uh, symptoms, you know, nausea, uh, all those different things, diarrhea, you name it, all, a host of things. So when, this, when strong flares cause ionization in the ionosphere, right, in the lower densities, remember the D layer is, is 35 to 55 miles in altitude. Right, it the D layer is is during the daytime. It is not there at nighttime. This causes radio waves to lose energy, and to become severely degraded to the point, or or totally absorbed to the point where there's interference with short wave radio communication. Now you understand why a, a CME can stop or interfere with short wave. I'll say that one more time. When a strong flare hits, it ionizes the D region of the ionosphere, right? That's where radio waves are. And so for short wave, it totally absorbs or diffuses those radio waves. And the radios don't work. Okay, they just won't work. That's what happens. So the Earth absorbs all that energy from the sun. And if it's strong enough, it's going to go right to the D region of the ionosphere. If it does... It will interfere with shortwave radios. And now you know why they have uh, the forecasting. And they say, you know, these geonometric storms are going to mess with radios and this, that, and the other. Because it can actually absorb or stop radio signals. It also means that satellites, that possibly they have a radio link inside, they can't communicate. So the electronic, the, the, the electronic circuit boards m may be inhibited from full communication, thus a satellite breaks down, can't work. This is how it damages things, okay? 
Now you know how that how that works out. So this is on the daylight side of the Earth's upper atmosphere. That's what happens. Um, and again, it doesn't reach the surface unless it's, you know, a Carrington event. So there we are. Ionization of the, uh, of the ionosphere, hence the name ionosphere. Right? That's why. Because it's, it's full of ionized radiation. Now you know. Now you know. All right, next one says, let's see. Appalachian Mountains are old. They're also brittle internally, which means they likely won't last. Right? With all these, we have a bad solar problem. I'll talk about this more on on, um, on past Paul's webinar. That'll be Paul's webinar. But we have some very challenging issues coming up. You know, this year, we have our atmospheres, right? The troposphere and stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, exosphere. All these different spheres are compressing. Density rates are changing within them. Modeling is thrown off and everything else. But this is happening to all the planets, all of them. So plasma is actually flowing differently through the atmospheres of all planets when they are observed. We have solar system-wide changes that are not going back to normal, which means something is underway affecting everything. 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 Somebody says, how do we test a spirit? You confront it, not run. You can even rebuke it. Right? Right? If you went up to the Archangel Michael and rebuked him in the name of Jesus because you did not know what it was, God's angels identify themselves. They'll tell you not to be afraid. They will communicate things to you. They do not leave you in limbo. The devil's angels are very seductive and they tell you exactly what you want to hear. They also try, they attempt to never speak about the Lamb of God. So, your very first conversation and evocation with any spirit should be in the name of Jesus. That's what you should do. So, the Bible says, any spirit that denies that Jesus has come in the flesh. Now, that doesn't mean you say, did Jesus come in the flesh? No. That's the whole act of the New Testament. Right? That the Lamb of God has come here, given his life for you and I. Was raised from the dead, now sits at the right hand of the Father. He has ascended. If a spirit agrees with that, and they indeed even compliment it, and introduce themselves and tell you exactly what they're doing, right? And they lift up the name of the Lamb, then you know who it is. A demon cannot do that. Christ is their warden. Did you notice how scared they were? When he confronted Legion, they said, what do we have to do with thee, thou son of God? Jesus suffered them not to speak. They begged him. They said, have you come basically to toss us in hell before the time? Then they began to beg him. They said, please let us go into the pigs. Let us do anything but not go to hell. Let us go into those pigs. And what did Jesus do? He did not send them. To hell did he? Nope, he didn't. They went into the pigs, and they would rather drown multiple times than to go to hell because demons are frightened of hell. Make no mistake. I know a lot of people think that demons are going in and out of hell. I believe that's one of the most seductive statements these spirits make. Why would God make hell that a demon could just go in and out when it wants to? That would defeat the purpose of hell itself, wouldn't it? Satan is not in hell. How could God make a place that would hold these spirits and yet they can just come and go as they please? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't buy that one. Everything in the Bible tells us that Satan is right here on this earth. That those demons are right here on this earth. 
They're not in hell. They're not. That means God is flawed if a demon escapes, doesn't it? I'm not buying that. I'm sorry, I can't buy that. Can't do it. Anyway. See, I froze my own screen. There we go. Back to the sun. You guys have it about the sun, right? The sun is going to have 19 solar events are on the way. Now, you guys know we're at solar. We're getting near this solar maximum. There are peaks within the maximum where there are a lot of holes in the sun. You call them holes, sunspots, or holes in the sun. As the solar season continues, all those holes gravitate towards the south and the northern regions of the sun towards the equator, right? Which will leave many of them Earth-facing. As they go around, they're going to be highly active, very volatile, right? As the solar cycle continues, these sunspots are also going to continue forming. We're also will do that. We're also near a flip, a flip period, unlike any other period, because most see they measure the time and the energy output of the sun during the time it flips its polarities. This time is highly unusual, and they do that so they can trend the next solar cycle. Okay. They do that. Now, I haven't put any dates up for the sun because I wanted to give that a break. Do you know why? So people could forget I ever put dates up in the first place. Because every single time I do that, people start, they, they get fascinated that somebody can forecast something of the sun and they forget about the substantive issue of the sun. They start thinking about forecasting and things and not the importance of understanding the processes of the sun and its relation to the earth and what will happen to mankind and how it affects everything on the earth. Hmm? Somebody said, can you please explain Isaiah sixty six seventeen? Sure. Let me go to it real quick. Let's go to Isaiah sixty six seventeen. Somebody's stuck. I'll have questions, so by the way especially about the Word of God. Now, I'm not an expert in the Word of God. I'm not. God is the expert in his own word. I just have weird insights. Here we go. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and abomination in the mouths shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Well, the, here, here's the whole thing for this. Look at this. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with the chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fire fury and his rebuke with flame of fire for by fire by his sword will the lord plead with all flesh yes he will listen i'm going to say that one more time for by fire by what by fire and by his sword will he plead with all flesh now let me pause we have read the bible so many times the lord said he will plead all armies will be drawn down to the valley of josephat he will plead with them there now you know how he's going to plead how is he going to plead for by fire and by his sword will he plead with all flesh. The only way to plead with all flesh is in a very dangerous and all-consuming situation issue. Huh? Let me continue. Let me continue. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. So when he pleads with them, much death will be seen. Pleading is not setting down God's pleading with humanity. It's not setting down negotiating a deal with them. No. It is by smoke, fire, and brimstone. It's coming. Do you hear me? So when they go down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, that looks like a meteor storm. And it's very close, by the way. Nobody has to believe it. They're going to have to endure this anyway. Let me continue to read. They that satisfy, it says, they that satisfy themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouths shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts, and it shall come that when I will gather all nations and tongues, they shall come and see my glory. So what is Isaiah sixty six seventeen? It is talking about the insatiable habits of those people of the earth at that time, or should I say at this time. 
right? So what is to sanctify yourself, right, is to do what? To it yourself, to deem yourself clean by your own power. You know how people walk through the earth and they say, hey, hey, I'm a good person. Yeah, I just cursed a few minutes ago. Yeah, I just, you know, I have two wives and cheated on everybody. I'm a good person. Right? That's what they say. I'm a good person. That's sanctifying yourself. And they not only do that, they sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst. One tree in the midst. My goodness. Right? That tree is like an ideology. A tree is like a standard in the earth that never goes away. And so what they do is they sanctify themselves by what they have done themselves. Now, I hate to say this. They sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens that they have built because this tree was talked about in other places. And this tree had to do with what man believes in, in the world, not God, but in the world. And they're eating swine's flesh. That's meant for an insult. That's meant to, that, that means they eat unclean meat, things sacrificed unto idols. And the abomination, they eat swine's flesh and the abomination. And the mouse, they're forbidden to eat a mouse. They're all going to be consumed together. Those who consume swine's flesh. The abomination, you know what that is, the abomination, desolation. The abomination and the mouse, right? A mouse has no side it takes. They're all going to be consumed together. Why? These are the characteristics of those who will be gathered in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. That constitutes the world. Okay? That's what that is. Good question, by the way. The Lord says, for I know your works and your thoughts. And it shall come to pass, I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. See, that's why we're called out of the world. That's why people get angry at me, because I do not support these things of the world. I know, so I can see right through it. I've been behind the back of the back door. Men have no choice but to do what men do. We're not here to join those systems, but to make a difference in the earth for real. Not to perpetuate all this junk that people perpetuate. We still have the same problems we had 500 years ago. It just changes form a little bit, but we have the same problems. We have more toys, but people still starve to death. We're not too bright. And we're, we certainly have no resolve. The only thing people have done is protect those who were making it well. They protected them so they continue to make it well. The poor continue to get poorer, and the rich get richer. Pretty much the old adage, nothing else has changed. No, you make the difference in the earth. That's why I'm not going to sit back and, and point to anybody else in the earth saying they're going to make the difference. God has proven over and over again they don't make the difference. You do. And make no mistake, God sees what they're doing is filthy because they have no covering. The Lord said, why call me Lord and you will not obey me? What is the biggest thing, the biggest no-no God said, you better not do it? What is it? Somebody tell me. He said, you better not do it. He gave you a warning and the penalty is death. And he told you not to do it. What is it? What is it? What did he tell everybody not to do? We're talking about God Almighty and Jesus echoed the same sentiment over and over again. What is it? You ready? You ready? Vengeance is mine. That's what it is. People are walking through the earth and they probably saw too much dungeons and dragons or something like that. They really think they're the hand of God in the earth. No, they are not. And you're about to see because God is going to squash anybody who would ever do that. Who would ever think themselves to be the hand of God in this time. God has already said, he already declared that in view of all people, he would undo those individuals. The wolf is coming and is coming after those people who continue to act like that. The sheep are going to be scattered, yes, but that's what he's preparing you for. With the truth. So that when that shepherd 
who are supposed to be a real shepherd, when the wolf comes for them with their bragging blasphemous mouths when, and they're caught, the sheep are going to be scattered. And the Bible says there's none holy, no, not one. Why do people continue to act so holy when in truth we're all sinners saved by grace? Without Jesus, we're filthy dirtball rags. So then why do people act as though they were born squeaky clean and they're not? And why do they continue to act like the world's ways are going to cure the problem that they have? The consequences are coming. They're coming. And it must come to the same thing, but people will not listen. See, there's no instant consequence. You can say anything you want to. Nothing happens to you. Nothing happens to that person who just blasphemed the living God. Nothing is happening to these people. But God warned us that would not always be. There will come a time when the mouth of any prophet is going to be stopped. That's what the Lord said. That they're going to sit in confusion with their mouth hung open. Saying, ah, oh, God has deceived us. No, he didn't. Why? Well, it says that too. That they're going to say that God has deceived them. Now listen to this. The only way a person can say that God has deceived me is if they believe in something God never said. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this way. Men believe in their own prophecies more than God's truth. As you guys notice, I've been backing off, saying anything in the future here lately. You, do you know why? I want to disassociate myself from God's real prophecies i don't want people looking at me thinking oh what do you know he's saying that prophetic thing no stop doing that god says what we need to hear not me and then you have the people that hurt most of all when men lift themselves up People look at men and people thinking that their lives can truly be fixed if they can follow them. And that hurts me to the heart. That's why all of us should lift up the name of the Lord. Not lift up our names. But men love praise, don't they? They just love to have it so. The Lord's going to disrupt all of it. He's going to bring the whole thing down to the ground just like he promised. And this is before Christ comes. And this is before the bowl of wrath. And this is before the completion of the trumpets. It's coming. The whole face of this earth is going to be altered. And all of us will operate in truth. A day is coming that the Lord said that no one will ever prophesy in the name of the Lord again. A day is coming when a person will say, I'm not a pastor, I'm just a husbandman. That's written in the Bible. They'll say, no, don't give me those titles. That's not me. I'm just a husbandman. I'm just a farmer. I'm just a person on the earth. See, they're going to give all credit and their dues to the Most High. They'll never look upon themselves and say, ooh, I deserve all credit. Again, they'll never say that. They'll never say that. Those are the days coming. And the cracking of the earth in multiple parts over multiple times will surely seal the deal. That's why the greater earthquakes are coming. The big ones are coming. Not one big one for all times. Nope. A bunch of big ones. That's why the atmosphere will change to the point where no one will live on the coastlines 
They won't be able to breathe if they're near water. They won't. As the atmospheres continue to change and compress, the boiling point is going to change everywhere. Evaporation of the water is going to be a real thing. Humidity is going to be a problem. Mildew is going to be all over the place. And we're looking at a very short time. The only protection from any of that is truly to be a believer in Christ. But every idol in this world is going to be hewn down to the ground. Now, we don't know exactly how all that happens. But we know that war often brings idols to the ground, don't we? And watch what happens with Benjamin Netanyahu and his decision. And his four notable commanders. Watch what happens. You're looking at a process that nothing is going to stop. Just in case you haven't noticed, people are getting worse. People are starting to become offended by the words of Jesus. Again, they are. Men want to be right. They want to be right. They want people to look upon them as though they're the ones who authored the Bible or something. They do. And the consequences must come. And when they start coming, right? The Bible says that's when people are going to try and find those who truly believe in the Lord. Not now, but that time. That's when people are going to truly go try and find those who believe in the Lord. And you know what the Bible says? They won't be able to find them. That's what the Bible says. They will not be able to find those people who truly believe in the Lord. There's going to be a famine of the word in the earth. See, people forgot about that. That's starting to happen already because what you hear people talking about is not the word of God. What you hear people talking about are theories. Isn't that true? But he said, and the same offend people are gathering in groups at any time get mad. Yeah, that's right. That's true. That is true. Something I spoke of in 2010 that we would see in the whole earth a mob mentality from many different groups. Now, I didn't just dream up that stuff. All that came from what the Lord has given me. All of it did. You know, that brings up something else. I'm interested in seeing what the Lord has given some of you. Let, let me explain this to you. I've noticed something. Science has had their chance, and they have failed, right? They have failed. The Lord shows a nutball in the bushes like me something, like the storms that were coming, right? I just didn't really have the words to warn people. But I did my best. But it didn't come from me. It came through me, Right? All this weather stuff came through me. People called me uh, cuckoo when I started talking about the weather back then, that it was coming. Just like the nuclear topic. Some of you guys remember that, especially on the, um, uh, when I was talking, it was me, Angela, and Doug Hagman. We were talking, we were on air. Joe Hagman, his son, who passed away, we were on air, and I was telling everybody, that the nuclear topic is coming back and it's going to be for real this time. And when it comes back, where, where's that black cat? I believe he remembers that. Where's Hatterat? He remembers that. I said, when that topic comes back, right, shortly after that topic comes back, they're going to use it for real. It's going to be a real, the real deal. It's not going to be for posturing. It's going to be for real, right? Now, the Lord gave me that a long time ago. I mean, a long time ago. But the urgency was so great, I had no choice but to say it back then in the hopes that people would hear. You know what they did? All the pros came out and said that will never happen. All the professionals came out and said that will never happen. All the knowledgeable people came out and said that. Look where we are. So here's what I'm telling you right now. You have people that are so-called experts in the world that are blind as bats. They can't see anything. They can't see a thing. The Lord can show you something and you can bet everything on it. It'll come to pass. It's just that when he gives it to you, it does not look like it's going to come to pass. 
The experts have failed to predict anything in the weather because they're ill-prepared for what's happening. If they were prepared for the weather they're having now, they would have made the new names to this weather, to these weather phenomena 10, 12 years ago. But they didn't. But what the Lord gave 10 or 12 years ago has not failed. Has it? It hasn't failed. From small things to big things. It's been in God's timing. All of it has been. All of it. And it's not failing. What the Lord has given is not failing. That's why I'm interested in hearing what the Lord has given many of you. I'm not interested in experts. Has it? It hasn't failed. From small things to big things. It's been in God's timing. All of it has been. All of it. And it's not failing. What the Lord has given is not failing. That's why I'm interested in hearing what the Lord has given many of you. I am not interested in experts. Because they've gotten everything wrong. Everything. The shift of power is so great. I think it's that wrong too. Remember they said China will never have hypersonics. Right? That's what they said. That's what they said. They said they'll never have it. Two weeks later, China sends a hypersonic missile around the earth three times and ejects something from it. They bragged. You remember this, guys? They bragged. During 9-11, they bragged. What did they say? Nothing can enter the USA airspace ever again. China sent the slow balloon right into our airspace more than once. Huh? NASA, JPL experts. But if not for Elon Musk, they would not ever go back to space again. Experts. Hmm? That's one thing in politics they don't understand. When you guys hear politics, the same old jargon you've heard for years, you turn the channel. I, a lot of people can't even hear it. It's the same old stuff over and over again. Somebody comes in new on the scene that's not talking like these, like the, the, the zombie politics. And people gravitate toward them and nobody understands why. It's because all the rest of the people are talking the same failed things they have taught for 100 years. They're failed topics. It's not working. And it never has. And it's the same thing over and over again. You can almost predict what they're going to say. And the responses are just the same every single time. And people, they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear it. They actually want a representative. They do. They don't want the same old legal talk. They don't want that anymore. Somebody says, Brother Mike, the Lord showed me March of 2020, Omaha, Nebraska, and ruins, really? Do you live in uh, Nebraska? You guys live in Nebraska? Did you share that with them? Um... Don't, don't worry, we're going to get squared away. Bring that same thing up again, that person who wrote that. Bring that same thing up again. Uh, bring that up again Sunday, if you will. About Nebraska, please. Bring that up again. I'm not prepared to take notes right now, right, on anything. I'm going to write that down on Sunday. Because I'm very interested to know. I guarantee you the Lord is doing what he did last time. Guarantee you. Do you guys know, and I use this. Because it's so shocking and surprising. In the book of Enoch, it gives, it, it, it speaks at great length. According, you know, those things that happened before the flood. Do you guys know that people kept having dreams of seeing upside down? Here's what they were having dreams of. They, they would have the dreams of the trees inverted. They could see the roots in the air. They would see animals flying in the air, right? 
they would see fish in the air. And they were saying, hey, what are all these dreams with all the trees in the air, upside down, and all the animals in the air? Well, come to find out, as, as you keep reading, you find out what they were seeing was trees inverted in the water, animals swimming in the water, drowning in the water, right? Fish and animals in the water at the same time. In the dream, it looked like they were in the air. Which means the person's perspective who was having the dream was seeing it from the bottom of the sea, looking upward. Isn't that something? But they began to have this all over the world. It is recorded in Asia. It's recorded in the Middle East. It's recorded in the Americas. It's recorded all over the place that people all of a sudden started having dreams about trees and mountains and fish and animals floating in the skies. I find that that's just phenomenal. When we first came on air with COT many years ago, do you not know that you guys had common dreams? You guys were sharing your dreams, right? And every time you would do that, but you would not correlate with the other person, I was in shock. I was like, these guys are having similar dreams and they can't see it. They've already seen what's coming. You put them all together and it speaks a truth of truths. Collectively, you guys have already seen it. It's an amazing thing. I want to display that one day piece by piece. Because those who had the dreams cannot deny that they had them. And they're speaking to something. Right? The chaos that we're about to go through. This chaos, you guys, you had it. But have you noticed that God will give you a dream <clears throat> 10 to 15 years before something ever takes place? For example, many of you between, I'll say, 1990 and 1995, had very intimate dreams about the end days. You did. That was a time when people all over the earth had strange experiences. And in those experiences, they were shown the same prophetic things during those years. And for a lot of people, it was the first time they ever had something like that. This very first time. But indeed, a truth was spoken to great to a lot of people. And it's just shocking how the people ignore what was given to them. Now we're living in a time where it's unfolding. It's happening. Like a crazy stone steps dream, right? It just will not go away. Did you guys read that uh, O'Bannon? Did he get locked up? Did you guys read that? Did O'Bannon? Yeah, okay, they failed to drop something in O'Bannon's. Uh, uh, they delayed a sentencing of O'Bannon. Well, they're not going to delay that anymore. So there you go with him. There you go with him. Oh, in reverse. Listen to me. Because I heard a person, this is what I hope they don't do. I, I pray they don't do this. I heard a person say that the Democrats are truly on a witch hunt to smear President Trump. They're doing, they're, they're performing the Marxist model of, of imprisoning their political enemies. Right? Now hear me on this. Because when I heard that, it was almost like I heard, and I, I could almost see, I, I could see something else. Here, here, let me explain this to you. Suppose President Trump wins. It won't be the Democrats who will then be locking up political opponents and adversaries. I hope it's not Donald Trump. I hope Donald Trump does not do that. 
But I can almost hear, as that person was speaking, I can almost hear people saying, well, they need to, the same people who made that statement that Democrats lock up their political, you know, opponents, that Marxist move, right, that, that is Marxist, but the same people who said that, then I heard them, it's almost like I could hear them. They didn't say it today, it was in my mind or something. I could hear them saying, well, they needed to lock up the Democrats because of this. So they justified the locking up of Democrats. So it was almost like I had a snapshot of President Trump coming into power and then a sweeping change and then charges coming up on Democrats. Whoever was against him, charges came upon them to have them removed and jailed. And people justified it. I hope that never happens. Because if it does, the father is going to get involved and not, it will not be in the favor of anybody who does that. God's not playing when he says, vengeance is mine. He's not playing. And if they turn around and do that, after having said it's a Marxist move to do that to anybody, they will have become the Marxists. And I hope that does not take place. Because sometimes when you go through a hard time, when you're persecuted by what have been formal peers, it can be tough not to desire that their whole world fall apart. Let's go ahead and face it. That can be tough. If a person carries that, they'll curse themselves. They will. They'll curse themselves. And so, folks, we have a very iffy time coming. See, the true change needs to be in the hearts of people. God can exolve anything. Do you not know that God can stop these court proceedings if he so desires? So why hasn't he? Listen to me. Why hasn't he? Why hasn't he? Why is God allowing this to continue? There is a purpose in it. But you can't be biased to hear it. Anybody who hears it in truth is going to have to be on the side of Christ. Not on the side of the Democrats or the Republicans, but they're going to have to see those things as men, men's activities and stand within the kingdom of God to be able to hear it and not be totally offended. As for me, I choose Christ and I love the Lord's ways. I do not like the ways exercised by the world. I just don't. I don't. I'm kind of like this woman. This it, it was a woman in church a long time ago, right? And uh, they were taking. I was I was younger. I was real young. They were taking up an offering. This woman writes a huge check. Everybody's excited. They knew it was going to be a huge check. And I was up there with my mother, and I was just listening. We were about to go home, and uh, they got excited over the numbers. It was a hundred k or something, and they were so excited. Well, when they read a little further, the check was written out to Jesus, and they couldn't do anything with it. True story. Somebody wrote a check out to Jesus in church, right? It wasn't funny, but it was kind of funny. Actually, that was very funny. In other words, all too often men expect that everything is within the confines of what they're able to imagine and think, and that's what they're dealing with. I tell you, a whole nother matter is going to face them. A whole nother matter. And I hope that you guys are really ready for that. For a whole different matter, just like that, those people in church were not prepared. They weren't prepared for that check to be written out to Jesus. They weren't. Neither are the Democrats and Republicans ready for what they will unfold. Somebody says, how will the upcoming changes affect 
homeschooling families? Well, you know the crime is rising. Some schools in America are closed already. You know why? Because of threats, too many threats and actual gun violence. People attempting to get into schools to kill every child they can. It's a true evil in this world. Again, even yesterday, somebody else was stopped from shooting up a church, right? From shooting a pastor. And somebody was stopped in front of a pastor's house from doing the same. So the assaults are on. There have been people who have been stopped from shooting Democrats, some Republicans. I'm telling you, there's some... But how long will they be able? How long will they be able to intercede in these things before they start missing? Because as it multiplies, they're not going to be able to cover everything. And so life will change for all of us because of the violence. Life will change for every last one of us because of the violence. A tight grip is going to have to be put on everybody in this land. Be prepared for that, please. Please be prepared for that. Hmm. Somebody says, Oregon 7 Bible question, Jeremiah 7, 11, 14, because it was a time of their punishment. That's why I can answer that already. I'm very familiar with the book of Jeremiah. Pray not for the people because they were in rebellion and God had already declared their punishment. That's why it was told not to pray for those people at that time. See, Israel has gone through multiple punishments. And thank you for bringing that up because it's something that a lot of people miss. Did God ever tell people not to pray for Israel? Yes, he did. Because he had deemed their exile in the book of Jeremiah again. And they were a rebellious house. They were. So when God passes judgment up in the Old Testament upon us people like that. A prayer couldn't intercede. It'd be a waste of time because God said he would not repent of it. He said he would not. They were exiled into Babylon. In the book of Jeremiah. And then God said, I sent you to Babylon to be corrected. And you have caused that whole situation to be a burden on me, the Lord said. Because you went over there and began to prosper. You adopted the Babylonian ways. You've lost my holy days. You messed up my calendar. Now you bought that junk back to Israel. Then you read later on after Jeremiah and God says, I don't accept your feast days and holy days. I reject them. Why would he ever say something like that? Because God gave mankind one thing. And then as they mingled what God gave them with a bunch of other people's stuff, they came up with different dates, having people worship at the wrong times. That's why every time holiness is mingled with this stuff of humanity, God's word is distorted to the point where it becomes not his word. It is watered down and powerless at that point. And then that's truly when people walk around in the earth suffering. Because they're not walking in their God-given authorities. And they're always looking to mankind to give them their freedom. To grant them their rights. You have rights from the Most High. No person on this earth, in the heavens, or anywhere else can take away. Listen, that's why you got to read the whole thing. you got to read the whole thing in context. You got to read the Bible in context. You you really can't read one scripture and that's it. You can't do that. I encourage everybody to read the Bible and to read the whole thing. When you come across something like that, that's when you stop, you back up, you start reading the bigger portions of the, you, you got to go back some pages, read the whole chapter, see where everything is so that you have context and then you'll see it. There are people right now that deny that Israel will be trampled underfoot 40 in two months. They cannot accept that. And when it happens, the Lord said that it would happen. And the Lord also said that people would not believe it would happen. And from afar off, they'd be in anguish. But then they'd also say, God has abandoned us. If that happened to them, what can then happen to me? 
If you saw that in your lifetime, would you say that to yourselves? How can Israel burn and God protect me? Because right now people say Israel is the apple of his eye. That's what they say. See, we got to have context to see it for what it is. God told us there are thieves in his land. He told us he's going to allow dark forces to come into his land and to purge his people and that he would not make a full end of them, but he would keep a remnant that are true, that are truly his. The rest were not, not his. The rest were imposters. I see a lot of people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. But that's what we have the word for. Somebody said, uh, let me go back. Somebody said, his judgment is about to be poured out on Israel to purge it. Is it wrong to pray for them when they are invaded? Correction. Correction. Not his judgment. His indignation. See, his indignation is different than his judgment. When they're trampled underfoot 40 and two months, that is the indignation of the Lord, as promised in the book of Jeremiah. He declared that in the book of Jeremiah, why he's going to allow uh, Israel to be trampled underfoot 40 and two months. That is the indignation of the Lord. That's why he has put in the hearts of the 10 kings who have received no power as of yet, but will one hour with the beast to fulfill his will. That's his indignation. Once that is accomplished, Jerusalem becomes a cup of trembling after that's accomplished. Before that's accomplished, they will hit Israel hard and prosper. Nothing will stop them, and they will set up the abomination of desolation. There will be another exile and mass murders inside of Israel. People will weep between the porch and the altar during that time. But God will look down upon his land and pity the people. He will know his covenant. And then he will fight against those who fought against her directly. And it's all she wrote. That's when Jerusalem becomes a cup of trembling. That's when everybody who sought to harm her is going to wish they had never interfered with her. And then God will put down in that land a new Jerusalem. As the Lord has already declared these things. Here's the problem, though. Here's the problem. That that whole scenario is just simply not discussed. Not discussed. What do you think about those saying anti-Semitism laws will lead to the banning of the New Testament? It doesn't matter what they ban, right? The word is the word is your life. Your life is the word. You have the word in you. That whole word is inside of you. They will ultimately crush Christianity in this country, the USA. Just telling you what I know. Everything is going to be blamed on Christianity. Just like they're blaming everything on Israel right now. We're next. Christianity is next. And anybody who shares the message of Christ is going to be held in contempt of their own citizenship. It'll become the single most dangerous subject in the world. Hmm? Somebody says BP just posted that CERN got shut down. I'm not surprised. Not surprised. As is, it, listen, guys. That that those charged particles are building up in those uh, in the ionosphere, right? And we all know that CERN has superconductive magnets. They're very prone to top layered ionized radiation. So I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be. I wouldn't even be surprised if tomorrow they said, "Well, you know, the solar activity in in CERN." 
had no relationship, they can tell you anything they want to. If they write it nice enough, everybody believes it. Somebody says, why do you think Alaska is not a good place to live now? It's not that it's not a good place to live, right? Because I, I have to say this again. If you don't have guidance from the Lord, there is no safe place you can go. There's no safe place to go. If you have guidance from the Lord, make no mistake and can shield any place you're in. Any place. I'm, I'll give an example. You have a lot of people who think that Jerusalem is going to be a very safe place, but the Lord said, nobody go into Israel. And anybody in Israel better get out at a very specific time. Right? Now, at the end of things, when everybody goes down, when, when during that thousand-year reign, when things are reestablished, all things will change. Prior to that time, though, uh, it's going to be a dangerous place. But listen, I'll leave you with this. How can Israel be trampled underfoot if the USA is still in power? I give you a proposal, something to think about. I propose that something, something is going to cripple the USA. Something is going to hurt us so bad we cannot respond militarily to those things in the Middle East. I give you something else. Something will happen so bad that everybody who is involved in the armed forces is going to lay down their weapons and go home. They're going to depart the Middle East that way. What could be so bad that a person would drop their weapons, abandon their post, go AWOL, and go back home? These things are coming. These things are coming. And I hope that you guys are truly ready for this stuff. I'm starting to understand why, at the, in the end days, most people will not have this knowledge. I'm starting to see why. See, even right now, the word is so dist distorted due to a lot of theories flying around. But the core of the word is being lost. The events, some are being sensationalized. Some are being diminished when they shouldn't be. People are walking around with confusion and they don't know. What, what, they're, what they're finding out is that a lot of people have been using scripture for their own needs and necessities that's what they're finding out like you guys that are asking questions about certain scriptures you deeply want to know you say wait a minute something here doesn't make sense i was told and see that's the whole issue you were told things out of context i love context i want the truth i do i want the truth which is why i do what i do i want the truth and i want the people to know a greater truth than what they know about the world. That's what started this whole COT thing. I hope you know that. You know what it is? It's from a guy who saw some things going on in the background that's going to hurt people very soon. I mean, it's going to hurt them in a bad way. And somebody's got to tell people to get themselves prepared for what they never expected. Somebody's got to tell them. These dreams and stuff the Lord sends me, I'm very thankful for that. It, it gives some credibility. I already know I'm an ambiguous person. I know I'm an enigma. I know I'm problematic. But I'm so thankful that a person can't just totally discount everything I'm saying, right? Because some of the stuff is wild. I'm here to do what I can during a time. That's rough. I told you guys that in the beginning. It's going to be a rough time. And I got to be at my post during that time. Because when we truly start talking about spiritual things, you have people who have experimented and they have fooled themselves. One, one more example, I'll leave you alone. I will. People are out there following a formula. To get a demon out of a person. Right? Because they believe it works. They trust in their own formula. 
a time will come when that same person will break out that formula and it's going to fail and that demon is going to laugh right in their face. And because of their own pride and they're absorbed in their own wisdom, that demon is going to have its way with that person. And it will be a physical torment during that time. There are millions of people marked right now. Hundreds of millions of people. I would say billions of people marked right now. And when the time comes, they will be turned on like a switch went off. And they will change. Because they trust. The Bible says, lean not unto your own understanding. That's what the Bible says. Lean not unto your own understanding. But that's exactly what people are doing. And they're telling you they're doing it. They're leaning unto their own understanding. Because that's what's popular, isn't it? Huh? Isn't that what's popular? That's precisely what they're doing. And God said that people love to have it so. People are infatuated with infatuating things. Something is coming to bite the butts of everybody who is infatuated. And it's going to take a chunk out of their backside. And it's going to hurt. But it must be that way. Because if it's not that way, they would never yield. They would never yield to the spiritual word of the living God. There are people running around thinking they're right and they will hear nothing else. The only way they're going to hear the absolute truth is for them to utterly be proven wrong. So it's got to hurt and that time is coming. It's coming. God said he would not have us hold anything that's false. He's not doing it to destroy us, the Lord said. He's doing it to destroy that false thing we believe in, which could damn our souls. Folks, I'm not going to hold you hostage any longer. I'm a half hour over the mark, but we can do that. We can do that. We can do that. We can do that. Somebody said, where did the souls never written in the book of life come from? They're old, ancient. On this earth had to be billions of the fallen angels. The spirits of the fallen angels, the spirits of the children of the fallen angels did not go to heaven. They did not go to hell. God said they would be known as evil spirits in the earth. They would seek to inhabit flesh. They have an insatiable desire to fight, to go to war, to do battle. This is them. So when they jump in and out of people, that's exactly what people want to do. They've been here this whole time. I didn't just make that up. That's actually written. They've been here this whole time. Man is deceived into believing they're not here at all. You may ask how so. Emotions are a man-made thing. Yes, you have certain feelings. And you have a disposition behind those feelings. But let me tell you what those feelings are described as. When you get angry, something just stepped in you. Mankind has told you that it's you. Your father said, take captive your thoughts. That's what your father in heaven said. Take captive your thoughts. You are to put things down when they enter in, that they do not infest your heart. It is mankind who made up all these categories of emotions, not your father in heaven. Man did that. And people are trying to incorporate that into the word of the living God. That's why they can't see demonic entities. Because when you get angry, something just stepped in you to complement that anger. Do you see that? My goodness. Anyway, we'll discuss more, guys. We'll discuss more. I'll be back tomorrow. I will. I'm going to say God bless you guys. I got some more hardware to do tonight and tomorrow. I'm doing my thing. My thing tomorrow. Thank you, Lord. Back to doing my thing. 
I'm going to thank you guys too. This none of this would be possible without. So God bless you all greatly. Hmm? Rick says, "Ring me." I'm going to have you guys ring me. I got to fix one of our hardware issues with the uh, the phones ring right, but you can't answer them. Okay, that's a trunk problem. So we're going to get all that line. That's a routing issue. We'll get all that line now. Okay. You can't answer the phones. What good is the phone when you can't answer? So we'll get that worked out. So I can actually answer. Because I can see some of you guys calling. Now, ladies, I have to warn you. If you're a female, right, I have to have another female on the line to talk to a female. I will not talk to a female one-on-one. -on -one. I won't do that. I'm not doing that. I have to have somebody else. Uh, um, uh, one special person with me to interact with you guys. Males can call all the time. Females, that's a no go. You can call Angela, ladies. You can, but to speak to me, you have to do that in the presence of a witness. I will not talk to a female alone. See, the Lord said we have to be wise as serpents, as harmless as doves. Right? When you're when you're in a position where you're just the only male sticking around there, you don't dare talk to another female because in this day and age, people can say anything. And believe me, Satan would just love to jump into a person at their weakest moment. And it's not that anybody would do it on purpose. Satan will use anybody in their moment of weakness to tear this place to smithereens. He tries it every single day anyway, or I'll say every other day. He has stooped to some very low tactics. He has stooped to it. I told you guys that somebody one time gave us a big chunk of chain. They did. Now, because the Lord is the Lord, and I'm not dumb with that kind of stuff, right? This person, guess what? They said, no, nah, I want it back. That's what they said. That's exactly what they said. So none of that could be utilized, right? That happens a lot. You'd be surprised how many people gave and they say, well, I need it back. That's what they do. They do it all the time. And there are fees involved in that, right? So people do weird things. But now that they have a block list, some people are getting blocked from donating to cot because that's all they do they'll donate and then want their money back so they get blocked that's why i only use paypal right now because of stuff like that when when i when we went the account way one time and 20 payments people wanted back it's like they were trying to do something to take it down from the very beginning that's what they were doing paypal has never paypal has always been very good very good I mean, extremely good. So I trust PayPal. I trust it. Somebody asked me for an invoice the other day for PayPal because they could only give so much and they wanted an invoice. So good thing you guys bought that subject. I got to send that out next Friday, that invoice. Somebody says, did you give it back? Yes, I did. It, when, when, for people who want their stuff back like that, I'm not going to keep it. Why would I keep it? It's not mine. It's not mine. So, yeah, I gave it back. Okay. In fact, the funny part is it was never put in the bank. See, sometimes people will donate and the Lord will say, don't touch it. He'll tell me not to touch it. And sure enough, it goes right back to him. Right? It's going to go right back to him. But that's how people do. But PayPal, right? I've spoken to PayPal a few times and and uh, they're they're very good. PayPal is very good, very safe, good institution, good good people in PayPal too. Folks, God bless and keep all of you. We'll see you guys tomorrow right here at COT.